Hey everybody, it's Dan from the Outdoor Trade Show Network. It is Sunday night. It is time for We Care You Matter. And tonight what I want to talk about is I want to talk about what got me started in doing all of this probably 20 some years ago or better. It got me into uh, coming up with doing different things and something that I that I made myself and I was going to tell the story because that's I want to get in I want to talk about the coronavirus I want to talk to everybody tonight about look out for your neighbor look out for people that are around you talk to them let's ask everybody if they're all right let's all try to let's let's work at taking care of each other and I want to I'm going to talk more about that tonight um, about more about us all looking at ways of taking care of each other and looking after each other. We're at a trying time. This is something that none of us have ever gone through before. And I think this is something that we could just make ourselves better. Um, and uh, I just want to talk to everybody about that. But the other thing I want to get to is, is every product out there or a lot of products out there, there's a story behind, uh, there's a story to just about every product that was made that has to do with anything, but we're going to talk about outdoor stuff and outdoor products. And um, let's see if we got this and that up and going here. I want to make sure I got everything where I need it to here, everybody. And then I want to talk to you about the stick. And because probably 20 years ago is when this is the first stick that I ever made. And I'm going to tell you the story of how this stick came about and and where this came from and. Uh, it's kind of interesting, and, and I think there's every product out there has a story like this uh, that goes along with it. And what I want to get to is, is there is a, this is the time of year that the walleyes are moving up the river. Fish are moving right now. We've got, you know, the fish are moving. It's springtime. The water's warming up. And that's the other thing. If you're cobbled up inside and looking for something to do, go fishing. You know, go you could take the time. It's very relaxing. Go on a, uh, you know, on the bank somewhere, get your boat out, find a way to go, go to a lake or a river, go somewhere, wherever your favorite fishing spot is, go fishing. Enjoy the day. You clean the fish, you come home, you cook them. It's a real nice day and you feel good. And it's just, it's a, it's just a feel good. There's everything is, it's a feel good all about it. So, um, but I want to get to my stick here. So I have a spot on the Mississippi river that when the walleyes are moving up the river um, and they they get as far as the dam and then they'll spawn, uh, they, they come up, there's rocks up along there, they'll spawn on the rocks and they hit that magical day. There's a magic two or three days in there. So the fish will be active as they're coming up the river. They'll kind of stage up and uh, up below the dam there. They'll spawn out, then they'll move down. And well, after they spawn out, um, they get quite aggressive. But this spot that I go to pretty much every year, and I haven't been there now in a few years, is I check it when you, whenever I go to the river, I would check this spot to see if the, because if the fish are there, they're there. And if they're, and you guys all know fishing that if they're not, they're not. So I put a minnow on, throw it out there. I had a river three-way done up. And, um, you know, if they're there, you're going to know. Here your line starts going, boom. Okay, so we got them on the fish are in here. Well, on this particular day, it was that time of the year in the springtime where that you've had, you've got a couple feet of frost. Sometimes we'll have two, three feet of frost here in Wisconsin. And you, the frost isn't out of the ground and you've got a little bit of slime on the top. So the, it's warm enough that you got some slime on the top. But the problem is, is we're used to bank fishing and you put a stick in the ground that's got a little deal on it and you set your pole on that. So I had a pail in the truck and uh, I get over there and there's, you can't put anything in the ground and you know, and they were in there. I mean, it was as soon as that, it's, I swear as soon as that middle got to the, got down to the bottom down there, didn't sit there very long, your line was moving. and. So it was really good. But the problem was, is I had a five gallon pail and I had no way of, of dealing with my fishing rod where it wasn't getting all full of mud, it wasn't getting all dirty and you couldn't put a stick in the ground. And I got so frustrated and I got so upset that I went home, 
and I had some, uh, uh, an eight foot, and this is one probably by a half inch, uh, one inch by half inch. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a, a board or stick that I had in the shop. And I took and I cut, I think it was the, the, the well, this is the first one I did. So I looked at a five gallon pail and I cut the notches out right here. And then I did my little grooves right there so that my rod could sit there. And here's a picture. There's a picture of me over at the river. And that was a guy, I was over there fishing and a guy came by and I said, hey, would you take my picture? Uh, that was after I made the stick. That was after I had my original stick done up. And I said to the guy, would you take my picture? But that's my setup at that spot over to the river. And there's, there's no place that you can put a stick in to hold your rod, to hold your rod, um, to keep it, to keep it from getting dirty and full of sand and, and, and in the water and just to keep your rod, your, your, your reel clean and, and everything else. So I went home, I cut a stick. And I went back the next day and I hammered them again. And that was the start of, this is the very first stick that I ever made. So this is the very first stick. So from that, uh, I went on for years with that. And guys would always walk by and they'd say, oh, wow, did you make that? And I'd say, yep. And they'd say, would you make me one? And I'd be like, ah, it's just something I did in the shed. Well, one thing led to another. And well, I guess in 08, 09, when the economy went in bad, and a friend of mine, John, said, Dan, you make all this kind of stuff. Why don't you start selling it? So that started that journey. But from there, now my friend Kyle Allen took this. And Kyle is a very resourceful individual. And what Kyle did was, is he was looking at ice fishing. Because with this here, you know, you can also set this here. So this is a little ice fishing rod. So Kyle said, we got to find a way we can use this for ice fishing. And what we did is we put a cabinet screw on the end. And then we got a zip tie and a key ring. And you find the balance point so you can have whatever rod you want. Uh, eight foot, ten foot, this little one. That's my probably one of my best. But you find your balance point and now it's free weight out there. And oh, this thing is deadly when it comes to ice fishing. But here's what this setup looks like. With your longer rods or in the summertime, you can have it on a pier. But you can see I got I can set rods on top. You know, I can set a rod up here, just find the balance point. And uh, you got your little groove up there. I can set a rod like that. But that's all the things that came about over the years, especially with Kyle. Kyle's quite resourceful. So, but there's a lot of ways to use this stick. And that, I guess, is my story behind the stick. And that kind of started all this stuff is I ended up going here and going there. And everybody loved the stick, but guys, I have a hard time trying to figure out how to sell anything. So, um, oh, hi, Jose. Uh, Jose is, now Jose, um, give us a thumbs up. Jose is in Brazil. So Jose is in Brazil. I see we got a clap from Jose. Uh, thank you, sir, for watching. Um, I would like to have products. We are in Brazil now uh, with our TV network. We are broadcasting in Brazil. So, Jose, I'm glad that you're on board here, and I, I hope you enjoy this, and I hope you enjoy the story behind the stick. But that is the, and, and here's another one, everybody. I'll show you this. It's, it's so easy to do. Is Well, one thing's led to another. So now I put on here, so now, you know, walleyes are legal up to 15 inches over there, so you got a scale. And what I'll do is it fits on here so nice. But what I'll do is I can, the original stick was I'd catch fish, I'd measure them at walleyes, and if they were 15 inches long, boom, in the pail they went. So you got a measuring stick on there. I had a hook on. I had some of these done up where I had a hook. I got one in the boat. You can, you can grab stuff out of the water with it. So there's, a, there's so many different things that you can use this for. And uh, that started this all off with John saying, Dan, why don't you, you got all that stuff that you make. Um, why don't you start selling some of that stuff? So that was the very first thing that I ever made. With, and I ended up doing, I did the work myself. I got a patent on this thing at the patent office. And oh, I'll tell you what, I've enjoyed every bit of this, but trying to figure out. And then Mark over at... Um, 
Oh, Miranda, the plumble bucket. Yes, the plumble bucket. I got a bunch of plumble buckets. I love yes, my plumble buckets. Um from my from my road building days in Chicago. So yes. Yes, that there's a special place, Miranda. You know that from the plumbo days and and uh as it says up there, the earth moves with plumbo, and it does. In the Chicago metropolitan area, nothing happens um, without the blessing of the consent uh, uh, consent of the of the plumbo brothers. So uh, yes, the plumbo bucket. I yes, Brandy, you know I love my plumbo bucket. So um, with with that. Oh, I wanted to share everybody and the, every product out there has got a story. And that's what I want to get to is with this coronavirus thing going on and everybody's inside and everybody's bottled up in, in indoors and, and everything else. And if you want to tell your story, you, you'd like to share your story with us here at the Outdoor Trade Show Network. That's why I started this. That's why I'm doing this. I can send you a link. We can do these broadcasts. I can have you on. There's a, this modern technology today is fantastic. And, um, but you could come on here, talk to me before, but till we get through this whole uh, coronavirus thing and, and uh, we figure out just exactly what's going to happen and go on with it, we could do these. Get a hold of me. I could do as many of these as everybody out there would like to have. I, I would... I'm, that's the reason that I started doing the We Care You Matters. I want to share your story. And I wanted to get to that. Sometimes I get a little off course with where my direction is and what I should be doing because we get a little distracted in what we're doing and, and everything that we do. And, and really my true thing, my true, for what I did, it, the reason I'm doing the We Care You Matters, I want to tell everybody's story. I want you to come on here and tell the story behind your product. And, and another one I want to get to is, is we probably don't do a very good job here with myself and Carlos and Joe with the stuff that we make and the stuff that we do of not sharing it and having it on our own, uh, our own TV network. I mean, here it is, everybody. We, we have our own TV network for selling outdoor products, and we haven't done a really good job with getting our stuff out there. So... I'm going to get with Carlos because we're going to have our e-bike. I need to get him on there with the e-bike. Uh, I need to get these back up on the website. Mark Viner at Emma's Bait and Tackle in on Alaska has them in the store. He sells, he sells quite a few of these every year. Uh, he's got people. Mark figured out that this is a really easy system and it's it works well. You catch a lot of fish with it. I had a hard time uh, trying to get other people to... Something new, what I've come to learn all the, over all the years, when you have something new and different, it's hard for people to accept or to uh, just to, to, to try something new. They, they'll look at it, they'll say, oh, I like it, it's neat. But to actually take it and use it and buy it, uh, people, it's, they just don't. So I, I guess I, I know you get frustrated with things, and, and but that's the stick. I'll always have it. I'll always use it. I know it works. I've had, uh, oh, let me do this one. There, that's a day. That's a longer stick. I caught all those fish, every single one of those fish I caught out of that hole that day uh, using the stick here. And we had a little bit of wind, and then the wind would move it around. And uh, I had a good day that day. So I took a picture. But that was a setup using it ice fishing, and it works. And I wanted to tell the story of the stick and how the stick came about. It was that day over at the river uh, where I had no place to put a, you know, put a stick in the ground so I could hold my fishing pole up. And I got mad, and I went home, and I made this up right here. And like I said, I've got, I don't know if you can see the numbers on here, but I got numbers up to 15. That way I could measure my fish and drop them in the, in the bucket. And, oh, for years I'd be over the river fishing on the bank over there. Well, here's another one. Fishing on the wall. Uh, that should be up right now. Fishing on the wall over at Genoa. Well, really all the dams along the Mississippi, the perch will be in. Usually it's the first week in April or right about now is the perch are in. And I'll sit on the wall. And this works great for, uh, for me to sit on the wall. It, uh, it makes it, it's, it's a great rod holder and it, it, uh, it works for me. 
And I also wanted to talk to everybody about this Corona thing that we got going on is check on your neighbors. This is a time for all of us to uh, look after each other, uh, take care of each other. You got loved ones. Uh, you need to talk to them every day and you, you need to make sure that they're all right. If you got older relatives to stay away, but you can go talk to them to the door and to the window uh, or at least call them every day and make sure that everybody's all right. This is a time that I think that we should take our time to work together as a community, as a group um, and take care of each other. And this is where we can really shine and, and show that we are all deep down, we're good people. So, and that is, look, you know, check with your neighbor. When you see someone, ask them how they are. Just ask somebody and say, hey, how are you? Uh, do you need some help? I know there's been a lot of crazy stuff going on at the stores. Hopefully the people that have been hoarding everything, the reason they did it is if somebody that they know or somebody in their in their group of loved ones or in their in their that they 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 will be willing to share and i'm understanding that all the ammo has been bought up that there's all kinds of crazy stuff and what i'm hoping is is that the selfish thing is 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 not the is is that everybody deep down understands that in your conscience that we do this as a group and we look after each other. You're going to feel better and we'll get through this much better. And we'll come out of this uh, better often than before. Because here's another one, everybody, is I don't think this is the first, this is the first time in my lifetime that I've ever seen anything like this happen or anything like this has gone on or that we've lived through something like this. I don't think it'll be the last. So what we need to do is we need to look at ways that if this happens again, that we can improve ourselves, that we know what we're going to do. Um, and we know who, to, who we have people that are looking after us or we have people that we're looking after. So I think we can make ourselves better from this. Um, I think we need to all have a discussion about um, how we're going to deal with this down the road, because I don't think this is going to be the first, won't be the last. And, uh, and another one outdoors. I do my walks. You can go outside, you can walk, uh, you get yourself exercise, some fresh air. You're not in a crowd, you're not in a group of people. And that's another place that you can ask when you see people, like I did my walk today, I asked everybody that I, that I met on my walk, how are you? You know, how are you doing? Is everything all right? Or try to ask people, just sometimes ask, how are you, you know, uh, how are you doing? Um, but we need to look after each other. If we're all going to get through this as a, as I guess what you could say is the human race across the whole world here, we got to look after each other and we got to be a little bit smart. Um, and we got to, we got to look at this like, okay, we need to beat this. And then we need to know how we're going to deal with it if, if it ever happens again. So, uh, Jose, you're in Brazil. Hopefully everybody in Brazil is, is working diligently at dealing with this virus. I know here in the United States, we're trying to, I'm, Lisa and I are staying in. I know like Miranda here, Miranda's a nurse. I know Miranda, we're kind of staying away from you because you're, you're working right now and you're around a lot of people. Um, but everybody I, I wanted to talk to is, if you don't talk to your neighbor or you don't have a, you, you know, go knock on the door, ask them how they are. This is a time you put some things aside and we need to look after each other, take care of each other. Um, and, and sometimes it's just a matter of ask, you know, how are you? Are you all right? Do you, do you need anything? So, and I want to talk about, I guess, our products. I want to talk about our stuff. Uh, I need to talk to Carlos. He needs to get a video on the bike. We need to, I need to uh, have him talking about the bike. He has the knife. Uh, Rick badalini has got my knife or Carlos has got Carlos makes the knife. I've got my animal drag. I've got the stick. I've got a lure that Adam I'm hoping is going to help me with. So um, and anybody else out there, if you have a product that he has to do or a service with the outdoor and there's a story of how you started your business or how your product came about. The, that's why I started doing this. That's kind of my whole objective to doing this. Uh, from the beginning was 
I wanted to tell those stories and, and, and I wanted to share with everybody out there how these different products came about or the reason, you know, mine was I couldn't put a stick in the ground and I was mad because I didn't want my reel getting full of sand and dirt and, and mud and everything else and I needed to keep my fishing rod, there you go, I needed to keep my fishing rods uh, up off the ground. And so there's the stick, that's me over at the river, that's at that spot. Um, that's my fishing spot. That's my, my spot where the, the walleyes come in early in the season. Um, with that, oh, we need subscribers. So I want to share this with everybody. Go to the Outdoor Trade Show Network.com. And if you have a product or a service that has to do with the outdoors and you would like to sell your products or you would like to give discounts on what you make or what you do on a TV network, get all of us here. Get all of us here at the Outdoor Trade Show Network. That's what, that's what we're in the business to do is we want to give discounts to our subscribers uh, with outdoor products. And like I said, we, we got, we're, sell, we're selling airplanes. So we got a couple firearm companies. We're working on some more. Uh, I try to explain to everybody, this is not that hard, everybody. It's get us the videos. You could do it with your cell phone today. I'll help you, walk you through it. You take your cell phone, you hit that button for record, and just give your elevator pitch. Tell everybody, show your products, explain what makes your product unique, and then give our subscribers discounts. That's what we're looking to do here. Uh, and the firearms companies. This platform that we built, this TV network that we built, enables you to sell firearms and ammo on TV. Take advantage of it, everybody. Take advantage of what we have done, what we have built here. So with that, if nobody has any other questions and nobody else has any other concerns, um, and leave questions. And if you would like to share your story, Get hold of me here. We got time now. Nobody's working. Everybody's staying in. Uh, maybe it gives us a time to, to do some things that we want to do. So with that, I'm going to say, oh, next week, I'm going to go back to Lavelle up to uh, see Dan Creviston at Freedom Baits, at Freedom Baits Outdoors up there in Lavelle. So if you have a product or a service that has to do with the outdoors and you're up, look at Lavelle, Wisconsin. It's about in the middle of the state. So look and see where Lavelle is or get a hold of me. Come join us next Sunday in Lavelle at the bait shop up there. I'm going to be with Dan again next Sunday. We're going to do this, but everybody is welcome. You're always welcome here uh, at the Outdoor Trade Show Network to show your products, talk about your services and give discounts. So with that, I want to say thank you and uh, join me next week, everybody.